Now, here's Ed Bernstein. Hey, today we're going to talk about love on a plate. And we are not talking about the kind of love you, most people are expecting us to talk about. With me today are my guests, Kara Brotman and Marcus Roth Rothkrantz, who have, I, I got to tell you, this is um, an incredible cookbook. I mean, it, not only is it beautiful and a quality and a glossy, incredible um, photographs um, in the inside, I mean, but it is the healthiest cookbook I think I've ever read. <laughs> and it is healthy because, Marcus, let me start with your story. Because now you have a history of yeah. being unhealthy, right? Mine's more dramatic than her. She's lived yeah. like this for most of her life. I was the other one. I was the one that the moment I got away from home, right, the Pizza Hut, McDonald's, Burger King, yeah, let's go, milkshakes, hamburgers. I just lived off of pies and cakes and, and right. you know, sugar, basically. I put four bags of sugar in my iced tea and, and jam on my eggs. You know, I was like, I was, you have to peel me off the ceiling. Uh, Anyway, by the what, time what was I, the effect? Yeah, what was the effect of eating? I had like a lot that? of energy, but uh, I started having health problems. I started bleeding when I went to the bathroom. Scary stuff, like really scary stuff. How, at what age were you? How old were you? Uh, well, it started when I was basically 18, but it got so bad by the time I was 29 that my doctor said my heart was going to stop. And I was also coughing so bad, my lungs were filling with fluid, I couldn't breathe. I had to like cough, clear my lungs like every, you know, 20 seconds. I had glasses thicker than the windshield of my car. Um, it was bad. I mean, you name it, I had it. And um, I never drank, I never smoked, never did drugs, never even drank coffee. I was the good boy. So what was killing me? And I realized... Doctors couldn't help you. Doctors had no clue. They were giving me pills to hide the symptoms. So anyway, I started over. It was a long... I, I just started with what I knew was good, an apple, you know. And then I got a book about cleansing and juicing. And, it, you know, a little... When you're ready, things come to you. And it took me... It was a 15-year journey, but I realized... The closer you are to nature, the better you are. The more you deviate from the way your body's designed to be, the more sicker you become. So anyway, I made a long story short, I changed my life, turned everything around. I'm 54 turning now, and I'm better now than I was back when I was in my late 20s. And it was all because of cleaning out and starting over and living the way nature intended. But I loved Pop-Tarts and macaroni cheese and pizza. I didn't want to give that up. Right. So I said, well, how can I keep eating the stuff I love but have a healthy version of it? And that's how all this came about was I want to keep eating the stuff that I love. And I'm sure everybody right. else does too, you know. So, so are you uh, a proponent of raw food only? Mainly, yes. That, that, and that's kind of the secret that, that is the important factor is if you heat your food above 118 degrees, you kill the enzymes. A good example is you take an apple and you plant it in the ground, you get an apple tree. If you bake the apple, microwave it, cook it, boil it, whatever, plant it in the ground, nothing happens. Something happened with the heat that killed the life force of the apple. And the same thing with our food. If you eat dead food, processed dead food, over 40 years you slowly start to decline in health until you get health, you know, all kinds of problems and you die. Whereas if you eat living food, you get life. It's, it's, uh, very basic and so, we're the only animal in the world that cooks its food and we're the only creature on the planet that gets cancer diabetes heart disease the only animals that get those are the ones that eat food left over by man or are right. fed by man yeah 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 right. and animals no. if you go to the woods you, you uh, sorry you you don't see gray-haired animals or you know hairless animals or they they, they don't age so they just I, drop they eat raw i grow hair <laughs> then how did you so you you, you partnered up with Kara. And you, you were in the restaurant business? No, yes. Grew up in the restaurant business. Grew up in the restaurant business. Yeah. And, uh, and how, did, how did your interest in raw food, and, and by the way, if you're looking at what's on the table, it is um, it's so appetizing. Um, and we'll talk about all this in a minute, right? And how to prepare it. Because and you really try some of it. You, right, because it, it's not difficult to eat like this. Right. right? Okay, I'm sorry, Karen. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Um, well, um, my father owned Italian gourmet restaurants, but my mother was very healthy, and she would put, you know, she gave us fruit salads, and she never allowed us fast foods or desserts, and I was tortured as a child. I thought, boy, am I not lucky. You know, seeing all my girlfriends get to eat Twinkies in their lunches when I have a tuna sandwich wrapped up in a lettuce leaf, and... But when I was, now I'm older, you know, I look back and I'm like, God, I am so thankful my mother did that because I, you know, now 
um, when my brother and I were uh, 25 and 26, we, we thought, because we were eating like this all of our lives on my mom's side. And at 26, 27, we decided, why not introduce this food to the world? Because nobody, you, people were like, people thought, our neighbors thought we were like the weirdest family ever for eating this food. Well, so we opened a raw restaurant in 1995 in San Francisco. And it was, people are like, raw food? Yeah. Is the pasta like is it, is it even safe? You know, that would be my first question. Well, they just right? thought we, we put raw eggs and right. put hard uh, pasta, yeah. you know, like we're dealing <laughs> with regular food. But, you know, slowly, anyway, slowly but surely, um, I see, when we opened our restaurant, there was two raw restaurants in the world. Mm. That was in, in the mid-90s. Today, there are over 400 raw restaurants in the world. Um, so raw food is becoming uh, really mainstream. And, I'm and we have some in Las Vegas. We have raw, one in Las Vegas. Yeah. We need more <laughs> in Las Vegas. But right. So I'm really happy that raw food is becoming so mainstream. But we show people how to do it themselves. They don't even have to go. Well, let's just talk about doing it yourself. Because I find that the most difficult um, part about keeping a diet is being able to prepare the food. Right? I mean, it takes a long time for we most of us. We wanted to make it simple. Very few ingredients, fast, because we, we want to have a life, too. We don't want to have to prepare okay. food. And we know how difficult preparing food is for people, and they get frustrated, and then they go and turn to fast food, and they compromise their health because of that. We're very well aware of that. That's why we made such a, you know, um, we wanted this book to be very easy to understand, very easy ingredients to get, uh -huh. and cook times, you know, not well, It's certainly that. appetizing looking at the photographs. Let's talk about some of the food we have here on the table. Uh, that sushi uh, this looking is thing, sushi. which I assume is not sushi. It's yeah. not sushi. There's yeah. no fish and no rice, but we wanted it to look and taste like the real thing. I don't know. Can the camera, ca oh, there it goes. Hey, yeah. see, that's, our, is, that's our shot from the sky. This is, uh, yeah. It looks like a tuna sushi or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. tuna and sushi. Try it. it has this exact same texture and taste. You, you won't be, you should get, try one, Ed. Um, this is actually what looks like fish is aloe vera. It's this thing right here. Al hold it, hold it, hold it. This is the stuff that they put in creams, right? It's aloe vera. Right. Yeah, you you right. burn your hand, you right. put some aloe right. vera yeah. on it, right? It's the best oh, thing for your digestive system. It's, it's a wonder plant. Really? Um, so yeah. what we do is uh, I, uh, we butterfly it, you know, just, <laughs> just like a fish. Uh huh, yeah. Okay. And then just simply, uh, well, I rinse it for about five minutes in uh -huh. cold water to get the slime and the bitter off, uh -huh. you know, and then um, soak it in uh, beet juice and then rinse just for a couple minutes because beet juice dyes it red like fish color and then yeah. rinse it again, let it dry. I was going to ask you about that because when you think about raw food, um, you, and you know, I mentioned that you, most people think, well, there's a health issue or maybe it's not sanitary or you get salmonella or some uh, it's other It's usually animal products. It's, okay, but yeah. how, I mean, how, how do you clean and prepare it? Generally, you wash it. That's yeah, it. I mean, it's all you have to do. I mean, eating an apple, does that scare right. people? I mean, you have to wash it with um, like a soapy no, not thing really, or just but water. A hard spray, uh -huh. is, it, it really gets a lot of Bring it through the car wash, the self service car wash. They, they, they sell a, yeah. a spray yeah. at Whole Foods that's to take off the wax and the. You know, oh, right. But it's really, a citrus based but thing. But I don't but, even worry about that. Yeah. He gets on me for not washing my kale. Right. And I actually like a little dirt on my produce mm. because, it, you know, there's minerals in there that, you know, are really good for you. You know, the healthiest kids are the ones that go play in the dirt all day. The ones that are in a sanitary environment, they get sick all the time. Mm -hmm. you, you need, I mean, that's where you get your B vitamins from. Mm -hmm. But you just wash your food. Let's, let's talk about kale for a moment, because it seems to be like the, you know, the hot food of the year. Yeah. You know, everybody, you know, it, it seems like every couple of years it, it changes. Right. What's, what's the, the in new healthy thing? Is kale really that healthy? It's pretty good. It's not on the top ten. It but, has you know, oh, dandelion really? greens. Now that's oh, pretty. Oh, dandelion, yeah, dandelion greens. Green. Yeah, yeah. I have a, yeah. this, a video where I go out in, the, in my front yard, pick weeds, and put it in my blender. The, the dandelion flower, the whole plant's edible, uh, is the highest source of lecithin in the world. The, the greens will clean your liver better than anything, anything. And the root's really good for your whole system. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's probably one of the most powerful food and medicines you could have, and it's free. I wrote yeah. a book called Free Food and Medicine, which is all about the, the wild plants and how yeah. good they are for you. Um, so. yeah, dandelion hey, grow everywhere. some weeds, huh? That's it. Hey, we have a video I'd like to show, just kind of you know, uh, demonstrating what it is that exactly you do prepare. Okay. There once were two sisters, one sweet and one mean. One wanted love, the other to be queen. No! Stop! No! Uh, stop! When the prince ah. goes right.
riding through here in a few hours. They will not see my peasant stepsister. Oh! Attention, how can I let him know? What can I do? Not to mention, I'm locked in with nowhere to go. When you want to show your parents you care, but you're stuck in a shed, think of something you can share like no one else. Just take a look around. Magic everywhere, so let nature's friend show you the way. Soon he'll be here. Take some buckwheat and some flax seeds with some sesame and water. Stir them all together and just wait a while. Now spread it all so neatly and place it in the sun. Then just let it harden sweetly. Slice and mash and mix this food and spread it neatly and you're through. A delicious pomegranate and these lovely figs and berries. Anything you have on hand will do just fine. All raw with nature's flavors, a little touch of sun. Remember nature has it all and you'll be done. Now the prince is near, he'll soon be as fast as their little wings could fly to the prince who was startled but willing to try. All it took was one bite from this fruity delight for the prince to quickly reply. Wow, is that avocado in there? That's as sweet as honey. Whoever figured this out, this is the girl I want to marry. Who is she? Where is she? Joe, get away! He made her a princess, and in return, her food gave them everlasting youth. They outlived everyone in the kingdom through the magic of nature's truth. Now our life is filled with love and light from nature's endless bounty. We're never sick, immune to every evil spell. So if you want our secret, there isn't much to tell. So listen to our simple way. Just follow nature all your days. Your heart and soul will be a place with nature's magic power. Let's never stop being this way. <sighs> they were so healthy and full of laughter, they truly lived happily ever after. <laughs> well, 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 Snow White, you got the prince. Yeah. <laughs> That's very, very cute. You know, and I was, as it was playing, I was thinking, you know, he was doing a takeoff on a Disney um, cartoon. And you go into Disneyland, and it's imp almost impossible to eat healthy there, isn't it? It is. They're getting a little better, but yeah. yeah. It is. But, you know, the, I have a Hollywood background, and I try to make health fun and educational and make it, people want to do it, you know. And so this is my way of doing it. I, I don't know a lot of people that take this route, but <laughs> it's fun. Okay, so we have, we talked about the uh, the sushi substitute. Go ahead. Right. Uh, these are fox crackers. Um, a lot of fox is used a lot in the raw food community mm -hmm. um, as a pizza, but <clears throat> I make it um, sweet by adding um, a little chocolate on top and vanilla flavoring and organic. No dairy, no sugar. Yeah, it's and all... it, well, how do you do fox... chocolate without sugar? Oh, we, we use... Um, Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Maple syrup, uh-huh. That, that's yeah. a tricky one, the sweeteners, um, because it's so high glycemic, you know, the, uh, the, 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 what's this other sweetener that we have? Oh, well, erythritol. Yeah. Oh, but, or, it's, it's, maple syrup, in our opinion, is better than honey, as far as the uh -huh. glycemic. Anyway, uh, these are really good. Yeah, and, and we, we put pecan, I mean, um, almonds and uh, orange zest, and it's soaked in orange juice 
rather than water. It's sweet. It's really yeah, good. So yeah, so it's sweetened. Anyways, and um, <laughs> this is apple ravioli. Uh, the slices are apple slices, and the filling is... Take one. Eat it. Yeah, the filling is a pecan cream inside, See, and it's cinnamon. The dichotomy of what you're doing. On one hand, it looks great, and I don't want to know how it was made. But if you don't know how it's made, you can never prepare it. Right. I mean, it's like, it's like a catch-22. As soon as you start talking about some of the ingredients to some of us, it seems, ugh, you know, it's, it doesn't sound appetizing. But you gotta try it, though. Let's try it. <laughs> it's, it's a treat. I mean, it's, it's it, right it, up. Yeah. It's like an apple crepe. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we want to match it with the best gourmet restaurants in the world. And then the chocolate cake here, you got to try that. We got you a piece here. Yeah, the chocolate cake, it's uh, no dairy, no wheat, no flour, no gluten, no eggs, and no heat to cook it. Um, but it's chocolate cake. So nothing here is cooked, per no. se? Nothing. Nothing, but we do have dehydrators. You can warm your food to 118 degrees, which is pretty so the, warm. Yeah, so the right. cookies, you know, you lay it out, it's so soggy, but after dehydrating them, you can get a pretty crisp cookie. Uh-huh. And, and those things we like to serve warm. Yeah, we like to serve those warm. But, um, so, so boiling is no, no. good? No. We, so rather it, than, um, you know, the, he sees me blanch my almonds. Pe people, regular people, throw almonds in boiling water for five minutes and mm -hmm. blanch them. I have to soak my almonds for 45 minutes, and then one by one I have to pinch the skin out of them. And then I can make a white, beautiful whipped cream, you know, mm -hmm. or something. Oh, yeah, would you like to try Well, I'll wait for dessert for that. Oh, okay. But when, when you're mm -hmm. um, eating like this, you must miss some of the old stuff. No, because right? no. this tastes just like it. If not better. Yeah, it's So better. is there a period of time, you know how they say in three weeks, it takes three weeks to change a habit. Right. So if you eat, eat like this for three weeks, do you lose the craving for sugar and salt and well, carbohydrates? Well, you still have the sweet and there's still salt. You use Celtic sea salt instead of the iodized. And what is, what is Celtic? How's that, what is the difference between that water. and kosher? And, it's basically ocean yeah. water uh, from the coast of France that's been sun-baked until there's nothing left but salt. Right. You've got all the minerals from the ocean, so you've got all the balance of minerals. It's not just sodium chloride, which is an imbalance. Right. But, but um, we have it all covered here, those, yeah. those bases. We have the salt, we have the sweet, we have the fat, yeah, the coconut yeah. oil, we have the bitter, the, what are the five all or the six taste. elements? All we, the taste, we have all the it textures, all. it's the same. I mean, that's why we made this book, so people don't have to sacrifice what they're used to. We have creme brulee, we have Pop-Tarts, we have... Pasta. Yeah, we have bacon in there that's made from bacon. coconut meat. You know what I found very uh, clever in your book? In the very front, you have a list of the um, ingredient things you have to have on hand. The key ingredients. The key yeah. ingredients that you, you need to stock kitchen. your kitchen right, with, exactly. including the famous blender. Right. Mm. Right. Is right, it right. Any, any blender work, or do you, you have? You know it? what? Uh, people put Vitamix. Uh, they say, "Oh, you got to right. use a Vitamix," but a regular blender it just takes a little bit longer, but it pretty much does the same thing. A Vitamix, Vitamix is does. just really high powered, and it'll liquefy anything uh -huh. in seconds. So, know? which which blender do you have at home? We, we have, have a Vitamix, but right. I, he's making a new blender. And I'm making my own in a while, but... No BPA, no... no. You know, a number you, I, look, I've been doing this show for almost uh, uh, 20, 28 years, and I can remember uh, 15, 20 years ago, uh, a couple times we had on the show Jay Cordish. Jay Cordish was known as friend. the yeah. Jewish man. Yeah. 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 Uh, he was also a friend of mine. Oh. Partner, actually a partner of mine, some, some business stuff. But uh, Jay, uh, you know, would created a juice machine. And um, and now, and I used it for 15 years or more. And now, I instead of juicing that way, I started blending. We do too. To keep yeah. the, the the wholeness, so yeah, get you get the wanna, pulp and right. things in the You in need the, fruit, the fiber. The fiber, yeah. right. Otherwise, for example, a glass of orange juice, 22 grams of sugar. That's as much as a, 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 a diet, as a soda. As a Talk about drink. that, because yeah. orange juice is not really good for you, is no. it? No. Anytime you juice, especially fruit, I mean, ju juicing greens is okay, but fruit, that's where you concentrate the sugars. and Because you need the fiber. You need the fiber, because fiber yeah. slows down the absorption rate of the sugar in your body. Right. Fiber is there for a reason. So what we do is we take the whole thing. My, I have a funny uh, a video on how to make applesauce. I just throw five apples mm -hmm. in a blender, and that's it. Just turn it on, and you got applesauce. Right. Seeds and everything. You can put some ice in. Uh, that no, works, right? I just yeah. put yeah. four yeah. apples yeah. in the blender, and, yeah. and it's great. You know? and you, but you, there's things in the plants that we don't even know what they do yet. 
nature has already perfected everything. I mean, if it, if it wouldn't work, it wouldn't be around anymore after millions of years. So why try to beat nature? It's already got it figured out. Just eat the whole thing. Uh, blending is, is nobody chews their food enough anymore. So blending does that for you. They say, well, blenders aren't normal. Well, neither are cars or working in office nine to five. You know, right. we, we need to keep up with the modern world. So if we're not going to chew our food properly, at least throw in a blender. It'll, yeah. But as far as juicing vegetables, though. Um, That's OK. As long but, as, but what is the purpose, though? to get the it, because the, the, the minerals, the nutrition, see, 70% of your body's energy goes to digestion. And if, if you are not well, if you're sick, if you have a serious illness of some kind, uh, you need that energy to go into healing, not digesting. So the best thing you could do, and all, all the you know, classic cultures speak about this, is to fast. Um, and do, you know, water or green juices. And that's what my father did when he had aggressive prostate cancer. He did nothing but juicing and cleansing his body. And um, it worked. He got rid of it within 30 days. Um, so anyway, the, 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 the thing is, you just have to be aware of what nature offers and to respect it and to stick with it. Right, but people, we make such mistakes. I mean, you go into like a, an upscale restaurant for breakfast, and everybody will pay extra to get fresh orange juice. Right. You take the, the old machine, you take the t cut the orange in half, and right. you squeeze all right. the juice out. You're getting nothing but sugar, right. because exactly. all the good stuff is left in the orange right. that you're throwing away, right, right? right. the fiber. And there's nothing wrong with having an orange juice once in a while, but if you're going to do it every day on a regular basis, that's when you start, you're going to be having some issues. And, and what about, because I remember he, he would be talking about, there's only certain vegetables that you can mix with certain fruits. Is that still well, true? Well, generally, uh, things like nuts that take a long time to digest, nuts and seeds, whereas fruit digests very quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you were to mix those in your stomach, the fruit is going to start fermenting because the nuts are kind of in the way. So they say eat uh, certain things by themselves, like watermelon, it's, it's very alkaline, so you shouldn't mix it with other things because it neutralizes your stomach acid. But, but, it, there's basic stuff, but the healthier you become, the less of an issue that it actually is. We, we're, mix, we're mixing things together that we're not supposed to, uh, but if your body is really working right, then it's really not that much of an issue. What did you have for breakfast this morning, Marcus? Nothing. No, you had the smoothie. Oh, yeah, I made a smoothie, right. But, well, what was in it? Oh, it was half greens. I just take a handful of greens, throw it in a blender, half fruit. That's what, my what are green? When you say greens, what are you, what are you throwing in? Lettuce of some kind, red leaf lettuce, was a red leaf, a, a red leaf lettuce, a whole bunch, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing, and you put it in there. Yeah, you, so ha my general rule is half greens, half fruit. And the fruit can be frozen. Frozen banana is always good because it adds that creaminess to it. Then I put some of my herbs in there. I have a green formula, protein powder, and things like that. So, you know, to just kind of, I, I'm like an alchemist. I like I know what each plant does, uh -huh. what each herb does. And then you can throw in, you throw in some peanut butter if you want, or some whatever. I mean, you know, make fun and make, make a, a good time of it. But half fruit, half greens, some kind of liquid like water, coconut water, something like that. Let's just talk about uh, organic versus non-organic. Um, if you have a choice, obviously you have a choice and it's affordable, you're going to get organic. Right. But I um, mean, do you ever... I mean, it's okay not to eat. Uh, well, the thicker skinned um, produce, like I don't, I don't like to eat unorganic. But if I do, or uh, avocado is okay, banana is okay, things with thicker skin. But um, you know, there's still a pesticide even in organic foods. Really? Yeah. It's terrible. It's so hard to get away from. But um, people, I know people that say it's better to just just give your child um, an unorganic fruit than nothing, but I disagree with that. Well, actually, you can help it a little bit. If you wash it in hydrogen peroxide and oh, water right. for a little bit, it'll help neutralize the toxins because hydrogen peroxide is the base uh, result from ozone, which we also have an ozone machine, but um, that helps neutralize the toxins. From and what do you do with an ozone machine? <laughs> oh, I do all kinds of fun stuff with it. That's, yeah. that's one of the most powerful oxidants there is. Um, I got food poisoning at a restaurant, which right. I'll remain nameless. And I came home, and I'm like, oh my god, I just want to go upstairs and get in fetal position. I, I had to send him to go get the car in Town Square, and I'm just like, I looked like I was drunk, you know, or had too much to oh, drink. Yeah, it's very devastating. It fortune. was terrible. Yeah. So I, I went home. I just said, I just need to crawl up in fetal position in bed. Leave me alone. He put the ozone machine in a glass of water for 10 minutes, so it was bubbling in the water. He said, come up, drink this. As I was drinking it, it just went inside me. 30 seconds. 
And I said, oh my God, Marcus, the, I was hurting so bad in my stomach. Within 45 seconds, all the pain was gone. And I'm like, what was that? <laughs> I mean, the what, things that I have experienced, that I've hurt, injured myself, and he has healed within a matter of, you know, between minutes and a day is just crazy. So that's one of the things we do with ozone. Why is that? Because the ozone destroys. It's the most powerful oxidant there is. It, it goes through your body. It cleans. It really, neutralizes yeah, anything yeah. in your body that doesn't belong yeah. there. It's really good uh, cancer therapy. Sanitizes yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's O3, really right? It's what you smell in the air after a, a thunderstorm. It's when lightning, electricity, high electricity hits the rain falling through the air. It zaps and creates ozone, and that's what you're smelling. It's electricity hitting oxygen. That's what creates peroxide, which is what neutralizes the, the toxins in your mm -hmm. body. So it's a good way to get rid of, rid of heavy metals, poisoning. I had so kind. soil in my car, um, ba bags of soil, and it smelled. My car smelled of manure, and he took the ozone machine and stuck it in my car within an hour or two. It, the gone, smell is gone. Let's talk about the book. Okay. Okay. The um, how I'm looking at these wonderful, you know, photographs and recipes, but. How easy, Very easy. Are, are some of these things? I mean, uh, look at like, how short, the, show okay, how short okay. that is. Okay, it's one this paragraph. Is page. So this is a burger patty. Yeah, it's right? one page. It's like it's, mm -hmm. you have five ingredients, right. one little paragraph. We want it so you can just whip it together and it's done. You know? but, and, and also, and, in our defense, too, if it's the little difficulty part, how, how difficult is making an appointment to, to, go, to go to your doctor <laughs> yeah, and right. get chemotherapy and then to go buy wigs uh, and, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this one really got me. This is a uh, that is amazing bacon stuff. jerky. Yes, that tastes just like bacon. It's amazing, yeah. and it and uh, it's something you can have around the house at any time. Just grab it and eat it. You can take it on a road trip. We have several road trip things in there, like nut nut uh, crunches and things. Right. So this we is a take great coconut one. meat and just uh, marinate it in a in a lovely kind of meaty style marinade uh -huh. and with chipotle powder on it. Beautiful Thank book. You. I mean, it should be Thank on every you. kitchen table. Uh, how do how do we love on a plate book a dot com. Love on a plate book dot com. com. Amazon, those kind of places, not yet. No, actually, I'm I'm not making a lot of profit on this. I want as many people as possible to have the book. So, uh, Amazon just takes too much money. So we just and, sell and, it. And my daughter is a big fan of yours. How did how did uh, how did she find you? Was I don't know. She's your something? daughter. Ask her. <laughs> <laughs> you got a blog or? Uh, oh yeah, I yeah. have a website. I have website? Marcus, marcusnews.com where you can see all the articles and recipes and things. M I R K U S. Um, and I have a website, HealAnything.com, where you can, you know, if you have any kind of health issue, you can... Well, I, I know this food will not last long when you guys walk out of here. Marcus uh, Rothkrantz, thank you. Kara Brodman, thank you. And eat healthy. <laughs>